Selecting a real estate brokerage can be one of the most important decisions in your business in order to ensure that you're getting the right support, training systems, tools, and resources in order to scale your business. Now, there is no denying that there's a ton of attention on eXp Realty just due to the nature of it allowing agents to create wealth, lifestyle, freedom. But one of the biggest questions a lot of people have is, how do you select a sponsor? Selecting a sponsor at eXp is again, another decision where you're not just aligning with a brokerage, but you actually have the opportunity to align with a specific group that you believe is gonna be the right fit for taking your business from where it is now to where you've always envisioned it being. Now, there's a lot of questions around, should you select a sponsor that's in your market? Should you select a sponsor that's a friend? How do you select a sponsor? Now, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but what I want to do with this video is I'm bringing on my sponsor, Connor Steinbrook, to talk about three different things. Number one, how he selected his sponsor. Number two, how I selected mine. And number three, why others are saying they have joined our group, just to give you three different perspectives of how we went about the decision-making process to hopefully give you some guidance as to how you can make sure that you select the right group based on your goals, visions, and style of business to take your business to the completely new level with eXp Realty. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to be diving into a topic that is very frequently asked to both me and my business partner here, Connor Steinbrook, who's actually my sponsor at eXp. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I frequently, over the last you know 14 months of being here at the company, continuously get people asking, how did you select your sponsor at the company? So as a disclaimer before we get into this video, we are not here to advise you where to go. We are just here to advise you as to how we made the decisions of who we selected to join at the company. Connor joined an amazing group. I followed suit. And we did it for very strategic reasons that I think you should consider when making your own decisions. So welcome back to the channel, Connor. It's awesome to have you back on, man. What's up, bro? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. It's going to be good to talk about this because both of us have faced similar I don't know, like, you know, quirky situations about how people approached us, but we both made our decision very strategically for very specific reasons. So I think before I talk about why I decided to align with you, and then furthermore, why people have decided to align with myself, what made you decide to join the group that you ended up joining, which is our overall organization? Yeah, I mean, you know, I thought about this a number of times. And so, you know, early on, guys, you know, as, as you look into me, I have a fairly large internet platform and a lot of people were reaching out to me about EXP Realty, as you can imagine, but it was in a, in a way that I didn't really think was tasteful. You know, I was getting all these videos sent to me in DM boxes and email boxes and, you know, sending these videos to me and saying, will you watch this video on your time expense? And when you're done with it, will you tell me when you want to come sign up and make me a bunch of money? So it never really clicked to me and I just kind of said, this is, this is not something that I think is the way to do this. And I never really took a deep look. I was watching part, like two minutes of the video and turning it off. I'd watch like five more minutes of the video and I never watched the video. And two years later, I still didn't capitalize on the opportunity because nobody explained it to me. Now, relationships are very important when you, when you look at picking a sponsor and you know, the individual I ended up choosing uh, was an individual I had known for a long time. He came from the background that I did, which was the real estate investing industry. So I had birds of a feather flock together, uh, flock together kind of commonality. And uh, the other thing that he really did was he, he, I could tell he cared and he showed me the time and respect to sit down with me over and over and over actually. And the other thing is that the whole team, everybody above the seven agents above them sat down and talked to me as well. So this was the only team out of all the five teams that I had every single person willing to give time to explain the model. And so that was a completely different approach. So <clears throat> I think the video strategy is a very flawed strategy. I think it's a kind of a one that people use because they think like, if I send out a mass blast to thousands of people, maybe I get a few to respond. It's just really not gonna be something that's gonna build a longstanding business or business that you have great relationships with. So it was the time invested with me, the one-on-one the -on -one time and that everybody else seemed to be working together that said, wow, I wanna, I wanna join something where people are working with a synergistic nature around the business where they're all working together as compared to just one random person that seems to be kind of doing everything on their own. But that, that was a big part of it was, was looking at everybody in the upline, understanding who they were, what they've done, what value proposition they could bring, and that they did a little bit different through in-person meetings. 
Yeah, I think the video thing is is something that I can resonate with because I first heard about eXp back in mid-2017. And, you know, the God honest truth is that I wish I knew about it the right way the first time back then, because my only regret is that I didn't join sooner based on, you know, looking back and seeing what it could have done for my business. But again, similar to you is I was bombarded with videos by other people, not even the person that sent it to me and said, Mike, hey, watch this video by this person. Watch it. Let me know. And it kind of gave me the feeling like they didn't really care about my business. They just saw my production at the time. They saw my social media at the time. And almost it made me feel like I was a potential cash cow to them. And that wasn't like how I wanted to be approached. And I think it was really unique. And I want to dive into why I selected you before we go a bit deeper as to what people should be, you know, thinking about is, you know, you and I didn't even know each other, but we ended up getting on a podcast together on your channel and, and it, you know, really went well and we resonated together. Then I had you on mine and we started realizing that we think very similar, but the key was that we also have different strengths. And after we started building that relationship, you were actually the first person where I shot you down first and you kind of, you know, said we should potentially take a look at this. And I said, no, but we continued our friendship. You didn't just, you know, go away and say, okay, this guy's not joining me. Then screw him. You know, we kept that friendship going. And then once we started building connection to the point where we realized we have these bigger ideas that we envision for the future, why wouldn't we partner to make it that much better? And then you were the first one to sit me down and say, okay, Mike, what are your five-year goals? Here's how this model and our specific group can get you there quicker. And it was the first time that it was a presentation tailored to my specific business, not somebody else's video, not somebody else talking about they care so much about, you know, showing their rev share numbers, showing their stock portfolio, doing all these things that are against compliance. You just said, here's how I can help you based on your style of business, your goals, your visions. And for you guys that are watching this, thinking about selecting a sponsor at eXp, one of the main reasons why I chose Connor is every single person that's looking to switch a brokerage, whether it be to eXp, KW, Sotheby's, Remax, Coldwell, wherever you're trying to go, you always have a current life and business situation. And then there's one that you're trying to achieve, a desired solution over here. And you have to bridge that gap. So for me, understanding that I saw the opportunity with this company, I understood the model was incredible, but I understand and I'm self-aware enough to know that a lot of agents are interested in investing, but I'm not an investor. A lot of agents are interested in building organizations and you've built a very fast, but very credible one. And you've done it in a way that I thought was done in had really good communication skills. So I understood through talking to you that your ability to communicate the model, to handle objections, to tap into pain points, to address solutions, it was something that I've never seen before. And I realized that, okay, I bring social media and decent production over here. You kind of fill in the voids of all of my weaknesses. If we partner together, we can build something substantial. And I think that was a really important key to me is that you were the one that could basically bridge that gap for me from where I am now to where I wanted to go. And I think that's something that not a lot of people think about because you and I both, Connor, get a lot of people that are, you know, saying that I was told that I should be joining somebody local, right? I'm in Calgary. You're on the opposite side, not of the country, but the continent in Dallas, Texas. And you should join somebody that you know, for whatever which reason that people are telling you. And for me, my thought process is that we're in a different world right now. And you might want to talk about this, Connor, is that we are now in a digital world. And even back when I was at a boutique brokerage local in my city, whenever I wanted to talk to my broker, I would call him, I would text him, or I would FaceTime or Zoom. I would never even go to the office and it was five minutes down to the road. And it's really interesting to see that people are we're at an, a global brokerage and people are still thinking locally where, yes, of course, we want to increase our local production. Yes, of course, we still want to have a strong local name and strong local credibility. But this is an opportunity that gives you unrestricted, no geographical restrictions to the potential that you can build this business. So my thought process was, let's not look at who's local that I could join. Let's look at who inspires me who fills in the voids of my weaknesses 
and who can give me the opportunity, the greatest opportunity to leverage this global opportunity and not just think so small. Yeah. Now, the thing about the HP business model, this is one for high performance individuals. This is one that's going to reward uh, big goal setting people that want to put personal initiative at a high level in their life. And so if you're going to look at a global opportunity, you want to look at someone who's looking to take over the globe, right? You want to look at someone who's looking to build something massive, not something local. So if you're building your business based off a brick and mortar building and one pinpoint on a globe, and we're globally connected through the internet and social media, which the internet and social media broke the business world, because now things are not local, they're global, everybody knows this. So why would you still in a 2021 global business environment choose to run a local business model? It, it makes no sense because the size of your market is the, directly related to the size of your business. <clears throat> so if you guys have a local business that makes 100 grand, million dollars a year, what if you duplicated that through repetition in other markets? If it's successful in your market, think about a franchise model or McDonald's and anything like that. So my mentor always told me, if you build a business locally that makes a million, if you build it in multiple markets, you make multiple millions. If you build that business model globally, you become a billionaire, meaning same model, same income producing system, but duplicated around the world into different markets to create overall market share. And so what EXP has done is it's shrunk in the world, right? So now we have the opportunity from the seat of our house to build a worldwide global business. So in guys, just a little over three years, we built an organization that's now in, uh, as of uh, just the last time I checked, 41 of American, 41 of 50 American states, five Canadian provinces and six separate countries. And we're growing at over hundred agents a month. And most of these agents are coming in all across the country. So think about that. You can't do that locally. You can do that globally. And you need to align with partners, in my opinion, that have the vision and are focused on glowing, are growing in a global environment. Yeah, and I think, you know, to kind of segue into the feedback, and this is just transparent feedback that people have shared with you and I, Connor, about why they've decided to join us, because, you know, we are growing at a pretty incredible rate. But I think the most incredible thing about what we've done is we've grown, you know, faster than most people have ever grown, but without focusing on growing faster than most people have ever grown in the sense that you know very well that when I came to EXP, still to this date, I've never called, I've never texted, I've never messaged, emailed, I've never contacted a single agent about joining our group. It's all been because of creating a value proposition that took agents from where they are today in their current life and business situation to where they want to go in their desired solution. So a lot of the feedback that we've got is the fact that you and I do spend a lot of time poking holes in different business models. We look at different brokerages, we look at different team structures, different rev share organization structures, and we say, how could we improve on this? What could we do to find a solution to make this just a little bit better or a bit easier or a bit more time friendly to these people? And how can we do that at scale in different languages so that no matter where people join us or what their language of comfort is, that when they join our group, they would be able to benefit from our resources, which is why we've taken our social media training and translated it into Spanish and multiple languages. So some of the feedback that you and I have obviously got, and, and you can tap into this as well, is that number one, obviously the social media training. I think the fact that we've built out a complete solution with the Social Agent Academy that every person in our group gets for free all seven tiers deep was a really great opportunity because during you know the pandemic, people realized they had to get outside of their comfort zone and build their business using social media. And the biggest thing, and this has been kind of interesting to hear feedback on, is that the mastermind calls have been some of the biggest game changers for a lot of these agents is that with the four mastermind calls a week, it's not just the frequency and the cadence, but especially on the Tuesday mastermind call on mindset, personal development and business growth, for example, the fact that a lot of agents have provided this feedback that they had all the tools, all the resources, all the platforms that they ever could have had, and they still weren't where they wanted to be with their business. And the fact that people have shared with us that we've been able to help them get outside of their own head, handle limiting beliefs, overcome fears, overcome objections and rejection, and get them to vibrate on a different frequency and work on a different level. That's been some really great feedback that again, we basically just continuously every single month look at the feedback we get from the agents. If we don't have it, we create it. The ability to analyze different business models. And if we find a potential pain point that agents might be facing, 
We just create a solution for it. And it's been great to see some of the success that agents that have come to us for those reasons have gotten. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing is, you know, obviously we're in business and then the brokerage business, people want to learn how to sell houses or recruit agents and build teams. But I think one of the reasons people gravitate towards what we're doing is we're, we're trying to teach people to be a complete entrepreneur, a real person that has the fulfilled lifestyle that they want on both their personal life and their business life. We're not just talking about how to generate deals and do production. We're not just talking about how to build a team and make money. We're digging into how, how to have a fulfilled future. We're talking about health challenges, teaching guys hydration levels and sleeping patterns. We're teaching communication skill sets and how to overcome self-esteem issues. And we're really building you guys up to be the person that you want to be in the future. And so one of the things that we do, guys, is and I really think, Mike, this is all people want. So all people want to know is, can you show them something that can increase their income, decrease time leverage, meaning the things they're doing in their business, can they do it quicker and more efficient? And can they reduce stress? So if you can show someone that can increase their income, have better time management and eliminate emotions that they don't like, as well as paint the picture of how if they're here today and they're trying to go here tomorrow, five years down the road, if the sacrifice that they pay in that middle road, meaning the resources, the time, the liabilities, the capital they spend, if they pay the sacrifice today, is the opportunity real that the payoff will be there tomorrow. And that's what people are looking for. And this opportunity is life changing and we can show them that, but then they wanna know that someone's gonna care about them and help them get there. So I think a lot of people are looking at someone as a notch on the belt, or as if they're almost like a, a chess piece on a game where it's part of their world and they're just coming into it instead of how can we help your world better? And I think that's why when they sit down with us, they feel that different conviction and the belief that we talk about what we're doing. Because guys, we want you not just to come over here for a little bit of time and have marginal success. We're trying to build friendships and partnerships with people that we can work with for the rest of our careers and have great life experiences with. So that's, I think that's the difference people feel when they sit with us. Yeah. And it's, you know, I feel that firsthand because, you know, I know that I've got a lot of ideas. I've got a lot of things going on in my mind and, you know, Every single time I've ever had a question, you're there. Every single time I've had an idea, you're there to talk about it. Every single time I've had a concern, a problem, an issue, you're always there every single time, seven days a week. And, you know, that's been the feedback that people give to myself as well, is that they're able to get in touch with me seven days a week, 365 days a year. And the fact that they have the confidence that when something comes up, they have somebody that will listen to them, will help them address a problem and find a solution whenever they want. It gives them the confidence that they've got the support system and somebody that actually cares. And I think it's, you know, to talk about some of the, you know, solutions that we've helped people with, you know, Suman's a great example, right? He, you know, joined us five months ago, pretty crazy. You know, he joined us, he moved from California to, to Texas five months ago, brand new agent, brand new market. He looked and talked to more people in different brokerages all over the map. He looked, I've never seen somebody go so far down the rabbit hole of where would be the best fit for him. Every model under the sun. And very hesitant, grilled us with questions. And we just said, hey, here's our solution. Here's the blueprint that other agents have followed. Here's the results they've gotten. It's proven to work if you execute on it. And he believed in it. And thankfully, you know, he came to us and started this channel, just like we showed him five months ago. And since over the course of those five months as a brand new agent in a brand new market with no budget, who didn't know anybody, he's now averaging a million dollar deal per week as a new agent with no prospecting solely from YouTube, just by plugging into our systems. And it's a great example of somebody that looked very hard to find somebody that they aligned with aligned with somebody and plugged into their systems, allowed us to show them what's proven to work, but he consistently execute on it. And I think Suman is a, um, one of many great examples of people that, you know, put their trust in us, but the fact that we delivered on it and helped him uh, actually get what he was, well, exceed his expectations, instead of just bringing him in based on saying all the right things and then going on to the next one. Yeah, I'm really proud of you, man. You've helped a lot of people already in a short time. Actually, you've impressed me. I'm your biggest fan. But, um, you know, the thing is, like, people, you need to understand this when you're growing an organization. Perceived value creates the growth, meaning brings people into an opportunity. So anybody can speak words, but if there's no teeth behind the bite, what happens when someone comes over and finds there's no real value? So if you guys are out there trying to build this, perceived value gets people in the door. A lot of people understand this. That's why they create this massive perceived value is somehow they're they're going to give you the world. They're going to give you the universe. And all of a sudden you get over there and you're like, that's not what I'm getting right now. And the real value is not there. 
So perceived value gets people in the door. Real value keeps them there for a career and also builds referral business. So if you guys promise a client that you're going to do this, this, you're going to you can market their house all over the internet, social media, that's going to get you a listing. But if you don't do what you're going to say you're going to do and you do a bad job for them, they're never going to refer you and they're never going to reuse you. So the thing is, I think a lot of people forget is you have to follow through on your promises. And so if you under promise over deliver, you have high retention, fast growth. If you do it the other way around, you have a revolving door that people come in, say, I got lied to, and they go out the back door. And that's not good for any business, the reputation or any team. If you're looking at what we do in our industry, it's just important, guys. Do what you say you're going to do. Under promise, over deliver. Show the people that you care about them. And if you do more for others than they do for you, you will never ha not have a time period where people don't follow you. And that's, that's just the truth. So you're either going to build your business off of greed or compassion. One has no longevity to it. You decide what you want to do going forward. Definitely. And, you know, just to kind of summarize things, guys, I think it's just, it's an important decision. And I think a lot of people come into any brokerage, any group, any team, any organization, and they have the feeling that it doesn't matter who, which, where, when, why. And I've personally seen that from my own experience, it has made a massive difference because the only, you know, one of the main reasons why I've been able to have the growth trajectory that I have is because I had a support system that I could actually believe in. And I knew that I could reach up as high as I wanted to go right to the top and I would get that support. And that's something that gives me the confidence that I've got somebody that's filling in the voids of my weaknesses. They understand where I want to go and they're helping me get there. I can reach up and get support whenever I want. And we're now doing the same for other people. So I think in summary, it's just important for you guys to think about where you are, where you want to go, who is going to fill in the weaknesses and what can you do to play to your strengths to align that gap between where you are today and where you want to go? Yep. I agree. I think, I think guys, you, if you haven't looked at the HP business model or you sat down and you had a presentation, maybe that you, you just didn't pay attention to, like I did for years, you know, we'd love to have a conversation with you and dig in and, and look at your goals. Look at what you're doing right now. Look at your time liabilities, look at your allocation of, of capital, what you're going to do, how you're going to scale, get a game plan together. So it's not just, we're going to sit down and say, here's the model. So we're going to say, here's the model. Let's look at your business. Let's look at what we can do, how you can transition, if this makes sense for you and how to build a better, bigger, better future for you and your family. That's what this is about. If it doesn't make sense to come over with us or the business mall, then it doesn't make sense. But if it does, after we have a conversation, then that's, that's the decision you're going to make. But you can't make that decision unless you have a sit down. So let's, guys, if you have the, if you watch this to this point, I'd love to sit down with you. Mike and I will have a conversation with you. And let's get a deep dive on what you're doing currently and, and where you want to go. And let's see if this is a real fit. And, and just because you looked on a video on the Internet, I assure you, we're going to have a much higher level conversation than just a generic uh, explained video. We're going to dig into a lot of different things you know, risk, liability, exiting the business, transaction flow, you know, if you want to build a team, attraction skill sets, retention skill sets, liability issues. There's a lot that's goes on, going on with this business model that most people don't see when they see the generic presentation that can only be done on a one-on-one -on -one, eye to eye conversation. And, that, and that's what we do with all our partners. Definitely. And the last thing that I'm going to say before I wrap it up here, guys, is, you know, one key thing that Connor said there, which is the fact that we don't just present the model from how we view it in the sense of a lot of people only care about production, which is great. A lot of people only care about revenue share, which is great. A lot of people care about a blend of both, which is great. And the problem that I faced when people were presenting it to me was that people always presented it from the way that they cared about. But the problem is, is that if Connor only cares about revenue share and I only care about production, what I found from my own experience is Connor was, you know, vomiting rev share all over me and stock and things like that. But I care about production and that pushed me away. And I think one of the things that, you know, just transparent feedback we've gotten from our group is that we were some of the only people to actually say, what do you care about most? Because a lot of people come to us, Connor, obviously wearing the Wolfpack hats and say, you know, Mike, I've talked to everybody under the sun. I just want to know what the Wolfpack does differently. And, you know, my first question in, you know, to return is, well, what do you actually care about? And by asking something and getting them to explain what they care about, now we can talk about what matters to them versus talking about what matters most to us. And I think it's important, guys, to make sure that when you're talking to people, make sure that you're not just looking at what's been done for them. It's what can be done for you. And I think on that note, 
that's where this wraps up. So again, guys, if you have any questions, the link is actually in the banner below this video. Um, so if you want to book a private one-on-one -on -one call or two-on-one -on -one call with Connor and I, feel free to do so. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.